Welcome to Journey Through the Bible with Essential Oils. My name is Cheryl Filler. I'm a wife and mommy. I'm an avid student of natural health and wellness and your tour guide on this exciting journey, which is my own creative portrayal uh, from my study of essential oils and love for the Bible. So glad to have you. This is destination number two, Essential Oils, A Way of Life. Where are we? As I look around, I see sheep. I hope you don't mind sheep. And those men all look similar. Could they all be brothers? I think they are brothers. Hmm. Something just doesn't seem right about what they're doing over there. Have you guessed the story? The story of Joseph? Here we are in Genesis. And indeed we are looking at the story of Joseph. And his brothers are getting ready to sell him into Egypt. We're looking at um, Gen Genesis 37, verse 25. It says, um, The brothers lifted up their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. Such a colorful... Yet sad story here. Um, Joseph's jealous brothers preparing to sell him into Egypt. But God's plans always triumph over man's evil plots, do they not? We need, I need reminded of that daily, that God's plans always triumph over man's evil plots. We're jumping ahead to Genesis 43 verse 11. And now we see Joseph as a ruler in Egypt. And his brothers have come to visit him. And they're about to return to see him with Benjamin, his younger brother, who he longs to see. And we see um, Israel, the father, saying, um, Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels. And carry down a present for Joseph, for the man. A little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh. Balm, spices, and myrrh. Twice casuant, uh, mentioned casually in passing without explanation are these aromatic and precious substances. The people of those times, which would be around 1730 BC, including Patriarch Jacob, were so adept and comfortable using essential oils in their daily lives. So no further explanation was needed at this time. However, Another little course in essential oil history. We're going to dive into these terms just for you and me since these terms have kind of evolved and have a little different meaning to our ears than they did in Joseph's time. Spices. Um, a Hebrew term most often applies to oils, gums, and resins. Um, occasionally to whole dried herbs, but aren't exclusively, almost exclusively dried herbs today is what we think of when we hear spices. Not so in Bible times. And balm. Did you notice these traders are from Gilead? It's the balm of Gilead ring a bell? Um, yes, the balm of Gilead was a soothing ointment. Um, it was distilled from the oleo resin of a tree. And Gilead means rugged, describing the challenging terrain that these um, men may have encountered in their journeys or to get this precious oil. Um, this is not one of our 12 oils of ancient scripture they're discussing, so this is a freebie little tip. Did you know that Young Living has a farm about 25 miles from Jerusalem, a cooperative farm, where they are growing over 8 thousand balm of Gilead trees and this oil is not sold separately but you can buy it in their Dead Sea mud soap that just came out last fall. Very exciting. This is the farm is the first large-scale site where this balm of Gilead, this ancient ancient plant has is being grown by Young Living. I am so excited about this. Um, continuing on myrrh. That sounds familiar, right? Well, here the Hebrew term is mor, M-O-R, and this was applied to various gums and resins in that time. 
including frankincense, galbanum, annika, cystis, and shittim. Well, the King James translators chose our English word myrrh, the Hebrew scholars tell us that in this particular instance, the original Hebrew word is laudanum, which would be cystis, which we know as Rose of Sharon. So, um, Rose of Sharon is one of our 12 oils of ancient scripture, and oh, I wish you could smell. This is usually one of the favorites. If you are sitting here with me in the room, and you can smell, it is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Rose of Sharon is very much treasured um, for perfumes. Um, beautiful fragrance. It has some physical um, properties as well, such as um, cleaning, um, nurtures the skin, it helps the immune system, uh, supports the circulatory system. But um, treasured for its fragrance, for sure. Um, the Song of Solomon says, Song of Solomon 2 1, I am the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. That's all for destination number two. Hang tight, let's go to destination number three God, the All Wise Aromatherapist. <laughs>